Look at I want to see Huttmacher at uh, linebacker. Let's see what happens. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Could you imagine meeting him with a head of steam coming through a hole? Nope. I can't imagine meeting him. <laughs> nope. <laughs> But he's not much bigger than you right now. As, like he's basically the same size as you right now. If I he's met a massive him, human if being. I met him, I'd still call him sir. Like, <laughs> you're, sir, you could be my child. But <laughs> and if I met his dad, dad? Yes, <laughs> if I met him, dad, I think I'd call him daddy. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> The whole threefer. Cheers, gents. Yep. We're talking big boys. I was gonna say fat boys, but they're not fat. No. They're all very just toned Jesus giant Christ. athletes. Giant trim dudes almost. <laughs> um you know, we've already talked a little bit about I don't know if you can ball. say Ben Scott is trim. He's still yeah, pretty good size. He's he's he- I mean, they're all hefty, but you know, when you when you look at what Prohaska looked like last week up on the podium, it's like you know, a lot of people have referenced how he made the same transformation that Ben Hart made going into last season. It made him a lot more agile. That's fair. It, it kept Ben Hart from getting beat around the edge so much this year. And if Prochaska's knees are going to hold up, and I mean, I don't, I don't, we, we kind of already talked about this with Elijah last week. Um, what did you take from the fact that he was a guy that was thrown up there first thing in spring practice? So I Elijah kind of, said vote of confidence. I, I kind of go back and forth as far as there's a lot of times I don't want to read too much into certain things, but at the same time, I agree with something that Elijah said uh, that there's, a, there's an intention as to who they put up there. Yeah. You know, whether it's a vote of confidence or whether it's, you know, what they're what they're doing as a whole or what they did this week as far as a good thing and just kind of a reward. Sure. Um, you know, we talked about it before with the quarterback situation as far as there was an intention that they put all three quarterbacks up there because they understood that only taking one of the quarterbacks up there was going to, no matter who it was, honestly, yeah. even if they would have only put Harburg up there, it would have been like he, either he would have gotten a shit ton of questions about Rayola or everybody would have been asking why didn't why didn't we get to talk to Rayola and yeah so there's an intention as to what they do you know you BJ you say it all the time as far as when we hear these players talk it's just an extension of this coaching staff they do this stuff for a reason I'm not a hundred percent sure what that reason was as far as Prohaska. it could be a mixture of a you know two or three different things I don't know it it seems to me like you know we we talked a lot about how bad Turner Corcoran was last year mm-hmm at, at left tackle and how, you know, it's it's funny that he was brought in as a tackle from a recruit standpoint, but the best ball that he's played at Nebraska was definitely at the guard position. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, he was a right guard, wasn't he? Uh, I don't He's remember. on the other side of the line. I don't, I don't remember. Regardless, guard. Yeah. There's a difference in the way that you're going to The thing play. is, he's been moved around so much that I just, you know, it could be, he could play all five positions in one game. Uh, you know, he just gets moved around all all the time. And Isaiah made, or Isaiah, fuck. Elijah made that reference as well. And, you know, is that is that really going to be why you're going to say, okay, he couldn't block the blind side? Maybe he's not used to playing the position, so he can't? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, he was brought in as a, a left tackle originally. So I feel like he has enough playing time to, to be good enough there, but I just don't see him as a guy that you can trust as a, a starter on that left side. And if Teddy's going to take that next step, which... Everybody's been waiting for the last uh-huh. season and a half for him to do. Is he going to get that shot now? Are we going to see a shuffle up? Because, you know, the, the main reason I wanted to talk about, especially the offensive line, was it, the stuff that you're hearing about, you know, is Evans Jenkins not quite ready? Everybody was super excited about We were excited about him. I know you were very and it's excited. Weird and I was too. It's weird to hear that Evans Jenkins might not be ready with how well he played last year. He stepped in when Newelli got injured. And he played so well. It's it's weird to hear that he's not, he might not be ready to be the guy. Well, because he was for the last half of the season. But for the first three quarters of the season, he was playing center on the sec- on the scout yeah. team. Like he wasn't playing at guard. And yes, that you can you can rotate those in and out. But 
if you're a center, you're a center, and if you're used to playing center, maybe that's going to be kind of like what you just said about Corcoran. If you're getting moved around, yeah, you're not doing the job you're the most used to. You know, when I when I look at when I work in travel healthcare, I talk a lot about how you might be qualified to do a lot of different things, but my goal is to find a job for you that most equally aligns with what you're doing right now, what you're doing most recently and you're most used to. Same sort of a thing here. My biggest question, though, is are they, do, you, do we think, because we haven't heard anything about Corcoran, do we think maybe they're giving him an opportunity someplace to just be stable since we have so many guys now? I, I think one of the reasons why we're not hearing about a lot of different uh, positions, because they're mixing it up with those three teams, and uh, I don't remember if it was Knighton or uh, Tony White that said this in one of the press conferences we're kind of just putting people in places just to see how they respond. Sure. And then that's what spring ball is. And then after spring ball, we're going to say, this is where you were best at. Yeah. And this is what we're going to go do moving forward. I kind of think that that's just what they're doing specifically with the offensive line right now, too. Just for spring ball, we'll throw people around. We'll see what you're best at. And this year, we actually have the opportunity to do that and exactly. actually evaluate as opposed to last year where we're like, well, we need warm bodies in this position yes. to go True. play it. Yes. And and we have now second-year guys that were redshirt freshmen that some of them can be stepping up this year. Mm -hmm. We're still seeing, you know, if you look up any projected depth charts for the offensive line, you're still seeing the, basically the same lineup that we saw last year to end the season, but with Micah Bazooka at right guard. With what has been said about him so far this offseason by rule, you know, like a month ago or whatever, you brought it up when we were kind of prepping for this specific segment. Do we know where he's at? Well, I, I kind of wonder if, you know, again, we talk, we ju I just said, you know, these press conferences, they're very intentional, whether yeah. it's who they bring up there or what they say. Um, we heard this week, S Stephon Thompson got brought up a couple of times, Oof. and to Tony rough. White even said that, you know, he's the transition that he's having isn't as smooth as necessarily as we would like it. Now, that doesn't mean that he's not going to be ready. That doesn't mean that he can't play or anything else like that. But maybe it's just more of, okay, these guys are learning the way that we are doing things. Tony White flat out said the way that they were doing it in Syracuse was much different than what we're doing here. Yeah. And he was at both places. Just because you're playing ball that in the same defense doesn't mean you're practicing or doing anything off the field the same way. Yeah. And so maybe the whole Mazuka thing from about a month or so ago when the, you know there was questions about his, whether it's attitude or just how he was adjusting to uh, the Nebraska life, maybe that was more what it was. It wasn't necessarily overly negative. And I think when we brought it up on one of our shows about Mazuka and those comments, yeah, we were a little concerned by them. But I think we also did a good job by saying, we're not... Going we're overreact. Over, we're not yeah. overreacting to it. It was February. It's just you know because we we brought up the fact that uh, Anthony Grant last year was suspended before Same type of deal. before practice start uh, before spring practice started. But he also never got out of the doghouse. And then he was back like three days later. Look, so we we know that Rule and his staff kind of like to talk to their players through the media. Yes. Yeah. Um. So I think that's Bill Jackson, more. Sal. It's more. Hey, this is your warning shot. Get mm -hmm. your shit together. Yeah, and we're letting everybody know. We haven't heard anything about this Mazuka kid. Mazuka, Mazuka kid. Not since. Si not since then. Yeah. So, so it, that means one of two things: it's either improved, and you got his shit together, or there's nothing else to say about him because he's not in there where he doing. We thought he would be. Yeah. 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 I like the fact that right now we have you know six, seven, maybe eight guys that we're talking about that we mm -hmm. who's going to start where. Yeah. Yep. Whereas last year we it was have like, options. well, we know we have three starters. <laughs> last year, was, we know these guys are going to be on the yeah, field. We, we don't know what they're going to do. We know we do. have three starters, and yeah. then everyone else, they're going to do their damnedest to keep a red shirt on them. And this, like, they're, like you said, we've got options. They've got bodies to throw in there. We're going to see later in games where if it's a tighter game, we're going to have the ability to gas some guys and not have to not have to worry so much whether or not they're going to be available at the end of the, end of the game. Yeah, much yeah. more in a position where you want to be with your linemen. Yeah. And that rolls me right into, again, I know we already kind of hit on this a little bit from Terrence Knighton talking about what he's able to do with the defensive line this year with the waves of guys that are able to go in as opposed to last year. The depth that they're building there is ridiculous. It's 
so incredible. And you look at the guys that they brought in with it, and then you also hear things about like Elijah Judy looking so much better this year, and you hear things about uh, our boy, the dude, uh, looking so much better this year. MJ Sherman, by the way. MJ Sherman, yeah. <laughs> I, For all you new subscribers yeah. out there, you notice you notice that I uh, that I was lacking a name there. Yeah. Speaking of new subscribers, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, yes. please. Do it, pussy. We're you like won't. sixty away from hitting our thousand mark. We're gonna do something fun when we hit the thousand mark. Um, speaking of something fun, though, we do actually have something really cool that we're working on right now, leading up to the uh, the the point where we're gonna start counting down the season. You're gonna start seeing a lot more content come flying out from us. Um, if you have any ideas on players you think are gonna be important standouts that maybe nobody's talking about right now. Hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you're thinking about, um, especially when we're talking about these two lines right now. There's so many guys on both sides of the offense and defensive lines that we're not going to be able to talk about all of them, and you might have ideas on who might have some extra extra playing time up their sleeve. Some of, Let us some know of the, this in the comments. Some of the stuff that I heard this week as far as with the defensive line guys almost makes me want to go back and kind of adjust the list that I've created. So <laughs> as far Doing as, what? Like, as far as like, my, what have you heard? No, but you know, when he was bringing up all these different guys, like the James Williams and Elijah oh, yeah. Judy and all these guys, it was just more of like, when these guys get brought up again, it's intentional. And whether it's because they're doing something right this week or whether they're doing something right in general, or it's uh, maybe a message to the people that are behind them or in front of them and saying, Hey, these guys are, nipping at your heels type thing you guys are making me feel like we need a like a, a decipher for for matt rule and all the things he does well and the funny I, thing is, how do i read what he's doing today the fun the funny thing when you're talking about the defensive line side of things because of the amoeba defense and the way yeah. that they run everything you know on the three three five technically you you could be talking about three positions or five six positions essentially uh, on the on the uh, defensive line, and there's just so many dudes that can play in different spots there. And you look at the the difference in the body type that we're going to see out of Nash Hotmaker this year, and how you know Ty Robinson's more focused on being a dude this year rather than just being a team player who doesn't fuck things up because he hasn't been able to practice much. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was kind of funny uh, Tony White being asked, you know, about you know they want to be. Uh, I think Terrence Knight was made the comment, and then Tony White talked about it later. Uh, the number one defense in the country, and all this other stuff. And Tony White's like, they haven't done anything yet, so we're not putting any any of that stuff on anybody yet. And you know, a lot of people have kind of been talking about how good this defense might be. And then somebody was asked. Some people were asking, like, could we possibly get an All American or two on this defense? And I started kind of thinking about it, and I was just like, as good as some of these players are. You brought up the amoeba defense type thing. I kind of so much rotation. They might be great, but I don't know that they're going to play enough. I think, <laughs> I think th that's the thing. I think well, you know, and that's a good some, thing. Somebody by the that way. might that, be an all American. That's not a complaint. Somebody that might be an all American standout like that is not going to be somebody I don't think playing on the front of the defense. It might be yeah. like an Isaac Gifford if he can if he can avoid the big mistakes like he made a couple times last year. <laughs> Or and maybe he has a defensive another, back that gets like six interceptions or yeah. something like that. You know, you could maybe maybe Hill will be back there and, mm -hmm. and and snag like, you know, he'll be he'll be thinking he's Trayvon Diggs back there, to hawking off after every ball. Yep. I don't know. Um, I don't see it happening, especially on the line, unless it's a Hutmaker or a Robinson, because I think those are going to be the only two dudes that are out there all the time. Yeah, but even then they weren't. I mean, at least last year they could be this year. They weren't even out there all that the time. That might look different with Hutmaker weighing twenty to to 30 pounds yeah. less than he did last year. But but again, with and their all... their conditioning being even better. With all of the guys that Knighton kept bringing up, those guys are going to push for playing time. Yeah. And somebody's got to sit for them to be out. You know, I mean, it's... You're right. Do they? Or can we just have a giant defense? <laughs> no, but it's, it's one of those things where when you build... Especially when you look at... I want to see Hutmacher at uh, linebacker. Let's see what happens. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Could you imagine meeting him with a head of steam coming through a hole? Nope. I can't imagine meeting him. <laughs> no, nope. well, he's not much bigger than you right now. As like he's basically the same size as you right now. If I he's met a massive him, human if being. I met him, I'd still call him sir. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're, sir, you could be my child, but 
And if I met his dad, dad? if I met him dad, I think I'd call him daddy. Oh, God. No, I, that, that's pretty much all I had on the on the offensive line and the defensive line. But when it comes to what, what I expect to see out of both groups this year, it's a lot more strength at the end of the games mm-hmm. because of what we just yeah. talked about with the depth. I also think and that's we'll only going to help us, especially when our schedule, you look at the way that it's set up, we're going to be able to get a lot of rotation down, especially in the, you know, the first four games there. We're going to be able to see what a lot of dudes look like out on the field, and they're going to get a lot of live game yep. action. And not necessarily, I'm not expecting to see any freshmen out there that they're planning on redshirt. No, but I'm talking about all the other dudes that have already that you know they've already had their redshirt year. We can get them on the field. There's going to be some garbage time, hopefully, in some of those games, specifically the Colorado game. I hope, but <laughs> but leading into the back half of the schedule, where things get heavier, where you're looking at a Wisconsin and an Iowa that traditionally had beat us because they were more physically fit. They were more conditioned. They had more guys to make it to the end of a game. Now we're going to be in that group of teams that you have to play literally the entire game against the best dudes that we have on the field. And and that could lead to the third down problems that we had in that third down show that we did a few weeks ago. Especially in the second half. Yes. Especially in the second half, where we were spending so much time burning all of our dudes up because we didn't have that many to yep. throw out there. And if you didn't watch that third down show, go back and watch that one. That was a good it's one. It's all the data. It's all. It's a data dump. Dump truck. <laughs> Got anything? I think dump truck's where you end it. <laughs> <laughs> and this may be the most unbelievable night in Cornhusker football history.